friends, it's Hillary from Good Wellesley Dogs. I'm here with my friend Lizzie, and today we're gonna to talk to you about how to fit a small dog for a prong collar. Because lots of people, um, lots of people are afraid of prong collars, and unfortunately that's, that's really too bad because they are designed, well-made ones are designed to be the safest collar you can use in training with pressure on and pressure off any dog, size dog, but particularly with small dogs where, we're, where we of course want to protect their airway, a prong collar is a great tool to use because unlike a flat buckle tag holding collar, it doesn't have a strap that cuts off their airway. Unlike a slip lead collar, it doesn't choke them out like a noose. A prong collar evenly distributes pressure at little pressure points all the way around the neck and it's not a bunch of hypodermic needles like it looks. It's not scary. It's just a really well-made tool. So how do you get started with a small dog? It's always a great idea if you can, if you have one in your area and you can afford to do so, to hire a competent trainer to show you. But if you can't, and if you would like to try to use a prong collar um, and educate yourself as I did many years ago, here's the way to get started. What's really important is fit. We don't want the prong collar to hang down around the dog's neck like a necklace. It won't work correctly that way. And what it will do is unfortunately allow the dog to lean on it and then they won't even, it won't work and they won't care about it any more than they would a harness or a flat collar or a slip lead. They just learn to pull against it because they can. So how should the prong collar fit? The prong collar should fit snugly right around behind the dog's ears at the top part of their neck. The absolute highest part. We don't want it way down here. We want it up here. So you can see that this collar that I'm using right now, this is a 2.25 um, millimeter, which means the size of the metal in the link, um, Herm Springer prong collar from Germany. And this is appropriate for almost all dogs. Um, you can use you can use these for very small dogs, although not teacup, because for that we're gonna talk about um, another type of collar, another brand of prong collar. But we can use for, you know, the 12 pounds right up through, you know, 60 pounds, depending on how hard a puller your dog is, the 2.25 Herm Springer prong collar or a good quality 2.25 from anyone else. Um, but I only use Herm Springer. So the way that we fit the collar is we want it to be nice and snug, and we don't want to be able to just rotate it all the way around the dog's neck like this easily. That means that there is too much slack in the collar, and you'd have to use too much force and pull or, or flick the collar too forcefully in order to have the dog even feel the prongs. So what we want to do with a prong collar is we want to custom fit it to our dog, as you can see, these prongs, it's kind of like a little erector set, and you take out or put in more prongs based on how big or how small your dog's neck is. So I just took out one of the prongs by pinching it. Some people call these pinch collars. And it's not because they pinch your dog, it's because you have to pinch them to take them apart and put them back on. Um, and now I'm gonna put the buckle piece back together and now I'm down to, because I have an integrated buckle in this one, I'm down to only five sets of prongs, but that's still 10 pressure points around the dog's neck. And this should fit Lizzie quite well. So we put it right up behind her ears. And I can put, when the collar is loose, I can easily put two fingers under there. And when I, can, when I put the pressure on, I can feel that the prongs are just touching her neck, pressure on, pressure off, nice. And that's a good fit for her but it is only five sets of prongs. So for much smaller dogs, like teacup varieties, where in order to get down to their neck, you would be down to like two or three prongs, and that's not really a prong collar. Um, or for other dogs that are on the small side, up right up through the mediums, that you would like more prongs to get a better distribution of the pressure, you can use a micro prong. Now the micro prongs that I use are made by Kimberland Collars and they are handmade in America and they are beautiful quality. So as you can see, 
a collar that has roughly the same circumference as this one where I was down to only five sets of prongs on the Kimberland micro prong, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got 12, we've got, instead of five sets of prongs, we've got 12 sets of prongs in this itty bitty little jewelry grade, well-made micro prong. And this is how they work. They sit on the dog's neck. You can pretend my arm is the dog's neck. Pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. No big deal. This is how all size prong collars work. The difference here is how many more prongs you have and that they are made of a much smaller gauge of metal. See, this is the prong on the 2.25 and this is the much smaller one on the Kimberland micro prong. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pinch it open because in this particular one, I don't have a, a, a buckle system on it, but Kimberlyn sells those if you prefer. And I'm going to put it right up behind Lizzie's ears. And I can see, I can turn it by pulling it away from her hair hair and turning the chain to where I want it. I can see that I probably could take out one more prong in order to get a really good fit. So I pinch it apart. I take out one prong. I connect it put it back together, and now I should have a collar that is custom fit the micro prong to Lizzie, and it's nice and snug so it'll stay up high on her neck. I'm gonna pull it away from her hair and turn it around, and yes, they do get stuck in fluffy dog's hair sometimes, and Kimberlyn also sells prong collar covers, which apparently helps with that, but I don't use them on my dogs just because I don't find I need to. Um, and now I've got the collar adjusted just right so that when I'm not giving the dog information or the dog is not lunging and pulling, the collar just sits there and there's no pressure whatsoever. And then when the, the leash attaches to here and when the dog would have wanted to give the dog subtle, gentle information, I would simply put pressure on the leash and there's that information that goes all the way around the dog's neck gently but effectively. So. You wanna have a snug fit. You want to take out or put in links if necessary, whether you go for a micro prong by Kimberland, and they really are the best ones I've seen made out there in micro prongs, or whether or not you get a Herm Springer 2.25 or another handmade um, good quality one. It doesn't matter. You want to have the fit correctly so it stays up high right under the dog's jawline because that's the best place to be able to use just a tiny bit of subtle pressure and get a great result when you learn how to use a training collar with your dog. So don't be afraid. Just decide which type you think you'd like. If you're interested in it, go ahead and and learn. There are tons of trainers just like me that have videos out all over the internet about how to use prong collars fairly, humanely, and effectively. And they're so much safer on a dog's airway than a flat buckle collar or a slip lead or a harness, which doesn't really give you any communication at all. Harnesses just harness the power of the dog to pull, but to each their own. And if you like your harness, then this video is just not for you. But anybody who's interested in prong collars, that's why I made it. It's for you. Don't be afraid. Just educate yourself and then go try. All right. Thank you, Lizzie. You did a very good job. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.